Hi, this is Steve Decro, and I'm going to introduce you to a dashboard called Response Time Compliance Daily. And so if you're in Insight Analytics on Zola Online, you can find this dashboard under Operations. And you can search through and look for Response Time Compliance. Uh, you can also just search right here in the search bar. So I type in Response, find Response Time Compliance Daily. Now, the goal of the Response Time Compliance Dashboard is to be able to set up your contractual requirements and then monitor your compliance from day to day. Uh, when I first come in here, you can see that uh, I've got a bunch of filters over here on the right-hand side. And I've got some instructions up on the top. It says, first of all, I need to set a date range. Uh, so you can see I've got the ability to type in here the dates that I want to see. I'll leave it for 9-11 to 9-17. And then underneath this, you see that uh, I've got some other things I can control. First of all, I can set my response time goal. Then I can pick my filters that define my contract. So I can pick my responding agency, call type, initial response priority, response zone, and uh, unit down here on the bottom. So those are a variety of things that uh, we've heard from you uh, that are the things that you need to be able to look at your contracts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and first of all select a couple response priorities uh, that I want to look at. So I'll uncheck all. Now you can see that nothing shows up. Then I'm going to go in and pick a couple priorities. So let's say that I have a contractual obligation for um, 911 emergency response. So I'm going to go through and pick out uh, just those priorities that pertain to my 911 emergency response. So now that I've done that, uh, I'll wait for the dashboard to update here. And at this point, if I needed to, I could go through, pick out the call types that were pertinent to those to this contract, pick out which units belong to the contract, and then also pick out the response zones that I need. Once I've done all of that, I'm going to go up here and set my goal. Let's say that my goal for this contract is 13 minutes. Now I've got a nice response time compliance dashboard. And so you can see that I can look over the period of time that I've entered in here, and I can see day by day if I met my compliance goal or not. Now this is looking at the 90th percentile response time. If you need to adjust that, uh, if your contract looks at the 95th percentile, 80th percentile, you would come right here and adjust it. So I can see I had a couple days in this last week where I did not meet my contractual obligations. If you look back up here in the directions, you can see that I have the ability to filter the day and the unit using the charts over here. So let's see what happens when I click here on a specific day, September 14th. And we'll see that now I've filtered down my information to see just what happened on this specific day. And I can see here my total call volume. The green calls are the calls that were compliant. The orange calls were the calls that were not compliant. I can even go here. I can click and I can see that during the 1500 hour, I had two calls that were not compliant. Looks like I had a few more here and I did. In 2100, I had three calls that were not compliant. Now I can also see my late calls by unit. So I come down here and I see that on September 14th, two of my late calls were with this unit, two with this unit, and then a bunch of units also had one late call. So if I want to see how this unit performed overall, I can go ahead and click here on the bar, and it's going to update now the rest of the chart so that I can see how this unit has performed over the date range that I set in my filters. The one other thing that you can see here 
are the specific runs that were laid. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. So now we can see where this unit ranks overall amongst all my units. And we can also see um, what the volume looked like for this unit throughout the week. And you can then also see that these are the 90th percentile response times on each day for this unit. Now to clear this filter, I'm just going to click back in the chart on any clear space. So I've cleared the filter and I'm back to where I started. So let's say let's go back to a day where I'll click on September 15th. Now if we come down to the call detail, you can see that these are all of the late calls for September 15th, and they're listed in order from the longest response time down to the shortest. Now once I've found, I'm just going to go ahead and clear this filter by again clicking in a, an empty space on the chart. And uh, once you've found the chart that you want to monitor, what you can do is come down to the bottom here where it says remember my changes. And you can see there's some instructions right here on the right. Save your filters using remember my changes on the lower left corner of the screen. So I'll click remember my changes. And what I'm going to do is call this custom view. I'll call it ALS compliance. Actually, let's call it uh, emergency compliance. Then I'll click on the remember button. And what that's going to do for me is save this view so that whenever I come back in, I can go directly to that view to see my compliance. So let's test that out. I'll go back out to operations. Now we'll go back into the dashboard. And when I first come into the dashboard, I'm going to have um, all of my runs here and it forgot all of my changes that I just made. But to get back to this view, I just go down here, click on the arrow where it says original view, and then I'm going to go to my custom views where I've got emergency compliance. Click there. Now it's going to bring me back to the exact filters that I just defined for my contract. So I can save off as many of those as I want. So if I have three or four or ten different types of contracts that I need to look at for my compliance, I can have one filter or one view set up for each of them. So play around with it and please uh, get your feedback to me. Um, the, my email address should be in the, uh, the email that you got uh, where I sent you this video. Thanks a lot for your time and your attention and uh, have fun.